future is that uh, uh, we have two mirror plans, one uh, from the XV plan and the YV plan. These two are mirror plans. And we have another two, uh, the guide mirror plan. It's um, uh, the diagonal direction, uh, represented here by the, uh, the dashed line. So uh, these uh, mirror plans and the, and the glide uh, mirror plans are actually very important for uh, the analyze of this, uh, the topological feature of this material. And uh, once you uh, do uh, DFT calculation, first we do DFT calculation without uh, turning on the spin of the coupling. So, and uh, then we get a band structure like this. So then from the band structure we see that uh, there's uh, band inversion features. Uh, in, you can see that, for, for, for example, from uh, uh, this M point to uh, Z point, then you will see very clearly a band goes up and uh, a connection band goes down, and uh, they form a, a band uh, inversion feature in between. And then they, uh, this band inversion will generate those crossing points. And all these crossing points are actually protected by the mirror symmetry. So all these points are actually located on, on the, these two mirrors. So then, once we turn on the uh, the coupling, we immediately see that uh, these uh, crossing points become, in most of the cases, these crossing points become anti-crossing, except along uh, the N direction, that there seems like uh, uh, that the, uh, a feature very much like uh, uh, crossing, not anti-crossing. But then we zoom in at this small area, then we see that uh, the band is actually uh, looks like this. It's, uh, it looks like anti-crossing, not crossing. But then we did the, the uh, symmetry analyze. Then we find that uh, both these, uh, uh, these two bands, uh, which is the connection band and the valence band near this small area, they belong to two different uh, point group representation. So they cannot mix. Uh, they, they're getting very close to each other, only uh, by accident. It's not uh, any symmetry reason why they should be so close. So then, um, uh, the first step, we try to look for wild points because they are getting uh, very close. Maybe there are wild points nearby in the non-symmetric uh, K, K place. So K space. Then, so then we uh, searched uh, in K space near this uh, feature, but we didn't find any wild points. Actually, the actual wild points are actually quite far away from this feature. So then. Uh, uh, here comes the problem. Uh, so, uh, so this is the band crossing that generates the uh, rings without spin orbital coupling. So, without spin, uh, spin orbital coupling, in a mirror plane, there will be actually six of these rings uh, generated by uh, the band inversion feature. So then, uh, with the other company, uh, gap will open on, uh, on these rings, and uh, the wire points will generate off the plane. So then, uh, here comes the problem: how how can we confirm if there are wire points or not? The wire points are not sitting on a high symmetry line; they are, they are sitting at uh, middle of nowhere. So, and also, uh, numerical calculation always contains the error, a numerical error. So uh, how can you make sure that uh, the two band is actually uh, cross, not a tiny anti-crossing? So then uh, 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 we need to actually calculate topological invariance for those material. Even if it's a semi-metal uh, uh, semi material, we can find out a way uh, to define topological invariance in some special plane then uh, we use this uh, topological invariance to make sure there is a uh, wire point inside uh, the brain zone. So in this particular material, we use mirror to number and this invariance for some special plan to, uh, to guarantee. So the point is, this is the top view of our brain zone. 
So as I just mentioned, we have a, a, a two narrow plane, M X and M M Y by uh, by the, the solid line, and the two uh, the glide mirror plane, uh, M X Y and uh, M a minus X Y, uh, represented by uh, two dash line. So because on this two mirror plane, uh, we have mirror symmetry. So we can define uh, mirror turn number on the on these two plans, and we have checked that the gap is fully open on these two plans. So it's uh, perfect for us to look at its uh, mirror turn number. So then the uh, question is, if the mirror turn number is is non-zero, for example, if the mirror turn number, for example, is one, then uh, we will expect uh, Cairo. Uh, uh, because it's a mirror term, so it's a helical uh, actually edge state on these two points, right? So then, uh, if we move away from these two two planes, this uh, helical edge mode it cannot just uh, uh, simply disappear. They must uh, um, at least uh, become a, a, a sector. So then, if those uh, states. Uh, connect to each other to form a continuous Fermi surface or not will depend on uh, the, the property on these two, uh, uh, two uh, uh, the glide mirror plane. If uh, the, the state will continue on these two glide mirror plane, we can ensure that there is a um, helical edge state for these uh, two diagonal plane as well. So then uh, this can be uh, determined by calculating uh, the, uh, of course, there's no mirror chain number on these two guy mirror plane because there's no mirror symmetry. But uh, these two planes has a uh, time reversal symmetry. It's time reversal invariant. So we can calculate the Z2 invariance for these two planes. So then uh, if the Z2 invariance is trivial, then uh, uh, this non-trivial helical uh, the state must stop at somewhere. I mean, the, the surface state of that must stop at, at, at somewhere in between because uh, there's no uh, non-trivial uh, state uh, remaining in this two, uh, the glide of your pen uh, because it's uh, Z2 invariance is uh, trivial. So then uh, to calculate the mirror turn number of two mirror plane and the Z2 invariance uh, for uh, a two glide mirror plane, we can fully determine if uh, there is wild point or not. So th then. Uh